And Abraham didn't know God. Abraham did not have the book we have. Amen? He did not have the experiences or the examples that we have. So when he started out, it was just all on his own. Because the land in which he grew up, they, there were pagan worshiping going on. And that's all Abraham knew. So he did not understand or know the nature of God. He did not have this book to kind of relate the nature of God to him. So he was indeed going by faith. So in my mind, Abraham, having lived in that area and saw how the others worshipped and what was required from their little gods from their little minds that they created. Leads me to believe that they did indeed require human sacrifice. Because if you go through the whole story of Abraham, the last greatest thing that God asked him to do is to sacrifice his son. And I personally believe that in Abraham's mind, that was always buried there from the very beginning. Because he had seen it around him. And in his mind he was thinking, well... And I don't know God all that well. I don't know all of his requirements. What if he was to ask me someday to sacrifice my son like these others do? So I think that was something in Abraham's life. God had to develop him, get him to grow. Little things he kept trusting the Lord for and God would bring about. Till that one day, the ultimate test where God told him that. But Abraham had to face that fear. And ultimately... He did, and was going to sacrifice his son, but God stopped him. And he said, now I know that thou lovest me. Now, the term there, in my mind, has always been uh, kind of misleading in the sense it sounds like God is saying, now I know. When in reality, I believe the statement really means that Abraham come to know that he would not withhold anything from God. But anyhow, that's the story of Abraham and how that from the very beginning he had to to learn to trust God. It was not just inherent in him. Everything is a choice. We have to decide. Mm -hmm. We have to decide that we believe in God. We have to decide and choose to come to God. And we also make the choice of whether we're going to believe what he tells us. Trust in him. So if you look at... uh, Chapter 12, chapter 15, verse 6. And he, talking about Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. I believe, the word here believed is more of an action word. It is not in the sense that you're saying, well, I believe, uh, I have knowledge of a faith or something. Like if you look at James 2.19 when it says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The word believe there does not mean trust. It's a a word of uh, knowledge. I have the knowledge there is one God. But in the case of Abraham here, when it says believed, if you look uh, Hebrews, in Hebrews, real quick. <clears throat> I can find it here. Hebrews 11 and 8, where Paul is kind of uh, on the discourse of faith. It says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. So Paul describes that as faith. And over here it says believe. So I believe those words are interchangeable. So in a sense you can say that, and he trusted in the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So, in this sense, then Abraham had to learn how to trust the Lord. And if you look at uh, Judges, want to go, we're going to look at two here. We're going to look at Judges, the story of Gideon, and then we're going to look at the, uh, in Daniel, the uh, story of the Hebrew children. If you look at Judges 6, 
12, 17. Now, I'll give you just a little background on what was going on here in Gideon's time. Israel, if you read the scripture in chapter 6, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years. So for seven years, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. They couldn't have anything because these Midians were a band of rovers. They come and took anything that was out, and the Lord had given Israel into their hand. So this is what Gideon was coming up with. I mean, this is what he had experienced for seven years. So when you look at the story of Gideon then, starting in chapter, chapter 6, verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, unto Gideon, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then? Is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So Gideon was looking at this calling of the Lord based on his experience of this bondage they had been under with the Midianites. And he wasn't ready to accept it, he wasn't ready to trust. <clears throat> And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go, in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he, Gideon, said unto him, I want you to listen, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Now, in today's terms, if you looked at that scripture, you would think that what he was really saying, Am I nuts? Am, am, have I lost my mind? I don't believe that God is really talking to me. He didn't really believe that God was talking to him. He wanted a sign that what was being said to him was from God. And if you think about it, you look back at Abraham, we just talked about when God asked him to sacrifice his son. If anybody should have asked God that question, well, Lord, convince me that this is your word and not some strange voice I'm hearing. It should have been Abraham. But in this case, Gideon was wanting that. He was wanting that assurance from God. And we know how the story goes. And, and he had to do the fleeces. And he put one out and the ground was wet and it was dry. And then he asked for the other, just the opposite. The, uh, the fleece would be wet and the ground dry. That's first. 